good evening or good afternoon or whenever you're watching this program and welcome to another exciting e episode of Community Forum. My name is Steve Fradkin. For those of you who have been wondering when is Steve Fradkin coming back, here I am. And for those of you who have been wondering why is Steve Fradkin coming back, there you are. Um, today we have, uh, we're going to talk about comedy and rock and roll, which is exciting. We're to, comedy Meets Rock and Roll is the name of the show, and they're presenting Boston's number one comedian, Steve Sweeney, who is not here with us, um, and it's going to be at the Stoughton High School Auditorium for, and to benefit the special ed department. Music by a group called Rock Steady, which is a Bad Company tribute band, uh, with uh, Tom DeAndrade, uh, who's a member of that. Special guest host, MC, Mark Snyder. Those of you who are uh, regulars uh, watching Smack have seen Mark Snyder many times. Uh, and performances by Stoughton's own Michelle Romero, who is a Portuguese recording artist, and Joe Kidd, who is, according to my notes, a local rocker. Not to be confused with Kid Rock, who has become a country singer. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand. It's all very confusing. Our guest today, Joe Kidd, or whose full name is Joe Kidd Fernandez. That's right. Welcome to our show. Fernandez, yes. did I say that right, Fernandez? Fernandez, yeah. Fernandez, that's yeah, fine. It's close. I don't speak Portuguese, but it's close enough. That's close, close enough. enough. Uh, I'd like to thank you for having me. That's you know. our pleasure. Always a pleasure. Uh, tell us about Joe Kidd. You know, where, where are you from? What, uh, a brief biograph? Uh, well, you know, actually, um, I'm a Stoughton resident for many, many years, actually. I came to We won't hold that against you. No, no, <laughs> don't hold it against me, whatever you do. But, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've actually, I came to America when I was uh, about a year old from Portugal. And um, I've been living in Stoughton ever since then, uh, about maybe 40-something years. I now reside in Easton. I've been there about 14 years now, so. That's almost Stoughton. It's like Stoughton yeah, Lake. Stoughton's backyard. Yeah. <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> and what's your musical background? Yeah, uh, well, I started playing, uh, I was in, getting into the music scene probably at the age of 11, um, just fooling around with the, like we spoke about earlier, a little ukulele type mm -hmm. thing. And probably sounded like Little Stevie Wonder. Yeah, stuff. something <laughs> like that, you know, a little fun thing like that. And then uh, I was so used to the, the Jackson Portuguese. Five. The ja <laughs> no, not the Jackson 5. Maybe the Osmonds. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I started, uh, I love music, actually, because I was so used to the Portuguese culture, actually. They really inspire a lot of traditional music and stuff. So when we grew up, we grew up to that. Mm -hmm. So that did kind of inspire me a little bit and, and staying with the music, you know, because I enjoyed it. So. Joe, what kind of music do you play? Well, actually... And I know the, the, the automatic answer to that, any time anybody asks me, all, all kinds. Well, but what do you specialize actually, in? Actually, um... I really kind of enjoy more the uh, the up tempo rock style of the classic rock days, um, uh, sort of like the, 70s the and 80s. yeah the 70s 80s rock style. Not so much. I was never into the punk, never into the metal mm -hmm. uh, things like that. I was more like a straightforward type rock guy. Santana, the Who. yeah the Santana things, the Almond Brothers, uh, you know all that old classic rock stuff. Even going down to the Eagles, the softer rock, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I um, always had fun with that stuff. It was, you know, the Eagles was always great. You could pick up an acoustic guitar at a party and start playing, you know, Peaceful Easy Feeling or something, oh, yeah. and everybody could sing along. It would be a little attention but grabber, you know? secret just between you and me. The Eagles were country music. That's what I mean. They, yeah. were. they, were. they were. They were very softer, but they moved slowly forward to a little more of a rock style later on, you know, but uh, they were considered country rock. Uh, you and I were having a good time before we went on the air, talking about uh, our, basically a mutual background. Yeah. We've both been performing musicians for a long, long, long time. Long time, yeah. And, uh, so, what? How long have you been playing music since you were eleven? You oh said yeah, that? well, yes, I, I was going to say uh, maybe um, it's probably going to be about forty-five years now that I should uh, I should really say about forty-five years. I mean, from the first chord I could actually. That sounded like a chord. You, 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 know, you know some more chords now? Oh, yeah, I know more than three now. <laughs> you and I both started off on the same instrument, the yeah. ukulele. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I found very interesting. Yeah. I, I don't, don't know too many people who play the ukulele. That's too funny, you know, because, but the, actually the Portuguese culture, too, you know, that's uh -huh. where actually the first time I saw it. Oh, really? Was, That's uh, interesting. The, the uh, Christmas. First time I saw it was on Arthur Godfrey's show. Well, actually, you, it's funny you say that. 
because they do that, they do those little puns and little mm -hmm. things with that. The Portuguese culture actually took that seriously. That ah. instrument was a very big part of the cultural, traditional folk music in Portugal. What do you enjoy most about uh, playing, performing music? Uh, that's pretty much a cut and dry thing. I, I just love making people happy out there and watching them smiling, having fun, dancing, singing along to you. Um, you know, just having a good time, and that really makes my night. When I, when I can make other people happy, it, it makes me happy for some reason. I sleep great at night every time I go and do a show. Mm -hmm. I never leave unhappy, and that's the good part about it, you know? Well, many years ago, I read Sammy Davis Jr.'s autobiography, and he talked about relating to the audience. And to me, that was like a light lighting up. Absolutely. It, was just, it just really made a lot of difference in my performing career. Yeah. Absolutely. And, it, it, and as you say, it's, it's relating to the audience. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, there were so many bands during the, the 60s and 70s that performed not even facing the audience. Correct. They were playing for themselves. And it, to me, that wasn't entertaining. It's funny you say that, too, because um, yeah, it all goes back to experience. Of course, actually, the years we've been doing it, we, we kind of know the little tricks and the mm -hmm. little cons and whatever, you know, the good, the bad. And the ugly, we should say, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's the good, the bad, and the ugly to being a musician. But um, I, I think, you know, it, it, one of my pet peeves actually is one of those kind of things where whenever I'm in a band or I have a band that's organized and I put it together, um, I try to get the best musicians that I can put in the lineup. But, you know, if there's somebody that uh, is always turning around and facing, the, the wall and their butts space in the crowd, that's one of my pet peeves, you yeah, know? I'll exactly. get right on them about that, you know? The next break, I'll say, hey, listen, face the yeah, crowd. It's not about the band, it's about the audience. Face the crowd, always, always face the crowd. Don't turn your back on them, you know? And that's one main thing that I have always learned in my life, you know? You, it, it, the more you interact with the crowd, I, I think the better you're gonna be accepted and they're gonna feel you mm -hmm. because if, if they feel you, and you feel them, you're just You've established in, a dialogue. You're just in, in for a great night. Yeah, exactly. You become and one. That's it. Um, I know you play the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you play? Well, I dabble a little bit with the keyboards too, and a little bit of everything. I've always I've sat on drum sets before. I've I've pretty much sat on every instrument you can think. I'm not really a woodwind instrument player though. Mm -hmm. I don't play any horns or anything like you that. You don't play the ocarina. No, nothing like that. But um. I, I can um, I can sit through a country song on the drum set. Uh -huh. <laughs> I could sit through a, a country song on a keyboard, <laughs> even do a little blues on the keyboard. But my gu guitar is really more what I'm, you know, aimed at. Well, the, old, um, the old story is that uh, how many um, bluegrass bass players does it take <laughs> to turn a light bulb? There you go. One five, <laughs> one five, one five. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. But you know, the thing is too with the music end of it, um, when you're having fun up there, I think people really feel it. Mm -hmm. And you know, when some, some musicians, they just go up there and they're, I call them the statue players, you know, the ones that just stand up, go up there and they're just great musicians, mm -hmm. but they just stand up there and just don't move and they're like robots. The trend seems to be away from that now. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of performers, uh, and I, as I said before the show, I, I was talking about, I'm, I'm a country music fan, I really enjoy it, but you get people like uh, Jennifer Nettles, who not only sings a song, right. but performs it, exactly. she acts it, she becomes Absolutely. part of it. You almost want to cry with her. That's right. I mean, she's that good. Well, and, it's that, and that seems to be more the trend. Actually, uh, you know something, I think you're making a good point on that. Um, I think that comes more from the new shows that are out there, um, I would say. Um, you know, the American Idol, The Voice, uh, mm -hmm. all these new shows that are out there, they're the people, the audiences on and, and television audience, audiences are, are actually picking up a lot of these inside tips. Well, you can see a performer like you never could before television. Exactly. I mean, you, 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 you're right in there. That's you, right. You know, you're examining their pores. Yes. It's, it's that close. That's right. And not only that, they have these big stars as judges now. Mm -hmm. They have these, uh, you know, like, I, I, got a, I even got stuck watching American Idol for a couple of years that Steve Tyler was on there because Steve Tyler was one of my influences, you know, mm -hmm. with Aerosmith. And uh, when I was young, playing the guitar and rocking it up. So uh, seeing Steve Tyler on a show like that, you know, it was kind of cool that he, even, even a rock and roll guy, but he's a total pro. And, and when he gives a piece of advice to someone, 
you should always take it. And so I think that helps a lot of the singers today on these shows become so good because they, they have a, a bar set now mm -hmm. where they have to be at least here to even sign up for that show because they know they ain't going to get nowhere if, they, if they're not at least here. Right. So I think that's a good thing because they do spend millions and millions of dollars on these people and bringing them into the business and throwing them back out after they're done with them. <laughs> so. Always amazes me how much <laughs> incredibly good talent is out oh. there that nobody has ever heard Imagine of. Imagine the thousands, the thousands that apply for those. I mean, we watch a show like Nashville, yeah. and you can see one great talent after another that nobody has ever heard of except Absolutely. from that show. That's correct. And uh, it's mind-boggling. No. Uh, what, what's, what's the biggest, I suppose, and smallest crowd you ever played for? Oh, well, the biggest, I would say, probably uh, um, back when I was younger, we used to do a lot of bike rallies, a lot of uh, things like that, outside events. Where, uh -huh. You know, uh, I did... Um, a van rally, one of the biggest shows I've ever done actually was a van rally, believe it or not, um, in Rhode Island, Narragansett. Mm -hmm. And this was, I was maybe about 22 years old. They had about 15,000 people, all with vans. Yeah. It was a van rally. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, no motorcycles, it was all vans. It's hard to find a parking space. I mean, mobile home, vans, yeah. those mm -hmm. from A to Z, from VW vans to any van you could imagine. It, and it was a big big event. I mean, they had this uh, four flatbed trailers set up for the bands. And I think that weekend it went from Friday to Sunday. And they had a total of like 18 different bands playing throughout the weekend. And they had about almost 20,000 people attending. And what was the smallest crowd you ever uh, had? And I bet I can beat it. <laughs> two? <laughs> I actually played in a club uh, back in the, in the 70s in, um, I think it was East Boston, um, and there was nobody there. <laughs> the bartender was the only person in the yeah, room. Kid. Every now and then, a couple would walk in, have a drink, and leave. Yeah. And it was like a rehearsal. Yeah. They had, and they had the, the, remember they used to project kaleidoscope oh images? My God, they had yeah. that going. Oh, and, that's uh, funny. And then one week we showed up, the boss had been arrested. So we figured, well, <laughs> That was it. That's too that funny. Now you know why. <laughs> yeah, now I know why. Exactly. Well, you know, it's, it's funny how that is, but, you know, I think you get to a point when you feel confident as, as a, a musician yourself mm -hmm. and you feel that you can, you know, do that, entertain a, a group of people no matter what it is. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see um, a reason why you shouldn't be able to sit down and entertain two people around a coffee table. Uh, or a campfire. Uh, we used Done to that too. Summertime bonfires, a couple acoustic guitars, and you got 12 front, people and boom, front there step you to the barracks. There oh, yeah. you go. There's your party right there. Where the most popular song I played was "I Want to Go Home." Oh, jeez. <laughs> I bet that was your popular song. What do you What do you consider your biggest accomplishment musically? Well, uh, musically, or I other think, than musically, I, I mean, know. my biggest accomplishment musically, I would say, is. Um, probably getting to the point where I'm at today where I, um, uh, I'm very content with everything I've done and everywhere I've gone and every stage I've been on. Um, I really have no regrets uh, mm -hmm. for anything. Um, so I think I would say I, right now would be I, the happiest I've ever been with my, my, it's not one accomplishment, it's all of them put together. Mm -hmm that kind of make my mindset now and, um, and make me totally content. I'm, I'm totally happy with you, everything I've done. You've achieved what you hoped to yeah, achieve? Yeah, uh, more than that, more mm -hmm. than that. I think uh, my inner self, too, because I, I counted on music a lot to, um, you know, so, sometimes you have a bad day at work. You, you must know that. You get home and you, you hit your piano a little bit, and after singing a couple of songs, the bad day went away, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with me. I'd come home and... Just pick up that guitar, start playing a little bit, an hour it's later. It's like a Kenny Rogers song. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you know, whatever. And after you're done, you put it down, and the bad day's gone. You know, and so it's a like a stress relief in a way, but um, it's a it's a, a passion that we have that we, I think I've gotten to the point of, um, I'm I'm okay with everything I've done in it. Um, I don't. If anything else happened from today on. It would just be another cherry on the cake, that's all. So you're not looking to become another Billy Joel? No, <laughs> nothing at all. I'm very happy where, where I'm, I'm at today, you know, so. 
I, I'm guessing that uh, if you're like any other musician that I know, and I know many, uh, there are things that bug you on stage, though. Oh, of course. A lot of things that bug you on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Off stage, too, <laughs> on stage. For, for example? Um, well, one of the things I mentioned earlier actually depends on the, the guys in the, in the band, too. But uh, I, I think one of the, my, my biggest thing that bugs me on a stage is when somebody has the lyrics in front of them and oh. they're reading off of a piece of paper. Yeah. I think that is probably one of the... You're talking about the singer on stage, singer, not, not, not the person in the audience. I'd say the singer, the, any musician that's still, you know, the, if you have a band and you're playing out there and you're getting paid to play, I think you should have the songs pretty much memorized mm -hmm. and you should be able to get through them without having to have a music stand. I, I don't know about you, but when I sing a song, if I don't have, already have it in me, then I can't concentrate on, on really on the song itself. That's right. I can't perform it. I can't uh, exactly. emote. Uh, if I'm just reading it, I'm just reading it. You're right. You're right. And it's totally... I, I understand a lot of, a lot of like, singers, especially, you, which I'm sure you've seen many, that they have their music stands up in front of them. You oh, go yeah. to, like, lounges, and you have to have a music stand. That, this, that's what I'm talking about. I think if you play in the lounges, and you've done it so many years yeah. uh, in your lounge act. I mean, if you're a side man, I can understand. Oh, if you're filling in, you know, that's a, a sub, you know, yeah. I've done that before, but even then, I only give them the list of songs that I know. Yeah. <laughs> I says, I know these. Yeah. How many of these can you guys play? And they'll go, well, we can do 10 of them. Okay, then I guess I'm singing 10 songs tonight. <laughs> but you talk, when you, when, <laughs> the first time when you said uh, someone with the lyrics, back in, in the 60s, uh, the the the, uh, the Kingsman recorded a song called Louis Louis. Yes, of course I remember Louis Louis. And nobody could understand the lyrics, so so everybody thought they were dirty. Right. And people would come up to me and say, "I've got the original lyrics to Louis Louis." Did <laughs> and you? I, and no, they were never right. Oh no, they were. I heard they were never right. Uh, the only part of that song I ever knew was Louis Louis. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Way yeah. I go. Yeah, but there are verses and there are words to those verses. That's so that. funny. I once interviewed the Kingsman and asked him, "Did you get in trouble over that?" No, we never got in trouble over. I that. know. That's somebody. I remember hearing that. You know. Uh, <laughs> what performer do you would most admire, and why? Well, actually, um, I would have to say, as far as um, musician mm -hmm. type artist. I would, I would certainly... Well, I wasn't talking about strippers. No, I, I mean a musician, artist, like someone that's popular enough so everyone would know who I'm talking about. I would really consider Carlos Santana probably in my, just in my era and my style of music that I like, um, the rock stuff and everything. I would put Carlos Santana probably in the top um, and then Stevie Ray Vaughan maybe second only because um, Carlos Santana has such a... Um, a Latin feel to his music, and, and it's so... And a more uh, commercial sound. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, pretty stuff. He's yeah. really got some real pretty stuff. Carlos Santana's stuff was top 40 oh, music. And loved Stevie it. Stevie Ray Vaughan never was. Right, exactly. That's what I mean. And uh, Carlos can probably handle anything like that that would be more in the danceable thing, the more commercial thing like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But Stevie Ray Vaughan, as a solo artist himself, um, he, he was incredible in my, the things he would do on a guitar, the things he would put together with his voice at the same time as playing the guitar. Um, that's a true artist to me, someone that can really get the whole package. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can go up there by themselves and entertain a room of 10,000 people and have them screaming for more. Yeah. To me, that's an artist. You know? And a very innovative artist yeah. as well. I mean, to me, innovation is... Is, the, is a big thing. I right. mean, th there are a lot of people who can copy other people. That's right. And, and it takes something really special to, even if you're doing somebody else's music or a classic piece of music or a, even public domain, if you can make it your own. Correct. Uh, I'm starting to sound like Simon Cowell. Well, no, you're right. No, <laughs> you are right. But see, these, these, that's what I was talking about earlier. A lot of people are interpreting things a little easier now because of that, because of those shows, you know, the advice they give. Is, is there a performer that reminds you uh, of, uh, of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, other than Justin Timberlake? And no, no, uh, <laughs> no, no, far from that. But I think I was never really one of the dancing type of guys. You know, I'm not, I'm not like a dancer performer. Uh -huh. You know, I'm not going to be choreographing my show as far as being an entertainer. Um, I'm more of a, a crowd kind of guy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, get up there, get them get rocking, get them rolling, and, you know, really pump up the music and... and you know, really give it to them like mm -hmm. that, that kind of guy, you know, I'm always interacting with the crowd. Um, I would say like, a, if I'm going to look back at that kind of era, I would say like a Bruce Springsteen type of guy mm -hmm. that he can pick up his guitar, whether it's the electric guitar or the acoustic guitar and, and get up there and he knows he's got backup behind mm -hmm. him that's going to make him sound great. And um, he can get up there and just let loose and just be himself and let, let whatever comes out of him comes out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he's kind of one of those guys that I would kind of put myself in that category where, you know, I, it's not something you rehearse. Yeah. It's something that's just natural, you know. Are there performers that you have seen that you look at them and say, God, I would never do that. And, <laughs> and, and, and yet they've become successful. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, well, wh who's, uh, what's, what's his name? I can't think of... Um, um, do you really want to love me? Boy George. Okay, yeah. That's one performer I wouldn't want to really kind of be. I think by now he's Man George. I yeah, mean. yeah, he could be Man George by now. But I mean, uh, that's kind of something I wouldn't do. I, I'm not into the theatrical part of it, you know? So you're not into Kiss? Or, mm, uh, well, yeah, well, actually, I, I am into that when, they, when you have a group that does it like that, but one guy. Uh, I couldn't see one guy dressing up like that and then mm -hmm. having the rest of the band not dress up yeah. like that. Well, that was Alice Cooper. There you go. Now, Alice Cooper, that's a whole other story. You know, it, something like that I would enjoy. Uh -huh. I wouldn't mind Alice Cooper at all. Uh, I think that um, today's music is more electronic yes. than anything. So there's a lot but of it's, fake. But it's moved away from the artificial electronic. Well, yeah. You know, the, the, the heavy it's synthesizer more digital, yeah. of, of, uh, of um, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, correct, for example. Correct, correct. And has moved into more the... the All digital now. Digital, but digital strings, digital piano, Everything. digital sax, you know, Everything. that sort of thing. Samplers, you know, yes. they just, uh, you know, just the processors they use mm -hmm. now and things like that. The, one of the questions that you had suggested to us about the most important person in your life now or in the past that has influenced you? Well, Be um, besides Roy Cohen. Yeah, <laughs> besides Roy Cohen. Because Roy has influenced a lot of people. Well, um, actually, I think that um, the person, of course, you know, I, I would first most likely say my mom, mm -hmm. you know, because she was actually a singer, too. She sang in and the church. And it's almost choir. Mother's Day, so you really have to yeah, sing. Right? I would say her. She's yeah. gone now, but she passed in 93. But uh, I think uh, even as a kid, she was always singing around the house, you know, cleaning them up, you know, while she would clean in the kitchen or whatever, she would be singing in the house. So I think she would probably be my number one inspiration. But um, I've had some people in my life that uh, I would say that would in that inspired me a little bit. Uh, my cousin Mary Correa from Stoughton, her husband, Jordan Correa, mm -hmm. he actually came over here from Venezuela when he met her before they got married. I was maybe 13, 14, 15 years old, young kid. And um, he actually sat down with me on an acoustic guitar, I, mean, I was maybe like 13, and started teaching me actual literal chords. Mm -hmm. And he actually taught me the, to listen and once you can make that chord ring out completely without no dead sound, <laughs> right, <laughs> then you know you actually did the chord correctly. Yeah. So I think he kind of helped me a little bit in that end. And then, um, but there's been a lot of people through the years, and I'm sure with you too, you know, that kind of you learn a little bit from this person, you learn a little attitude from that person, you learn a, a little lick on the guitar from this person. Mm -hmm. But I think everything combined is what, you know, eventually p makes you who you are in the, in the business, I think, you know. Do you feel as though you've gotten uh, support from your family and friends over the years? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't know what, what I'd do without them. I mean, my family, of course, number one, but my uh, friends, uh, I've made a lot of friends through the years. I, I am very fortunate with knowing a lot of people and mm -hmm. having a lot of people that have always been behind me. 
and um, supported when I throw a party, uh, you know, a dance party or something somewhere in Stoughton at a VFW hall, and I always pack it up. Uh, I get a lot of people there. So it's always nice when you get up on stage and you get a great crowd to, you know, especially when they're family and friends. It even makes you more, you know, you get more into it, right? right yeah. You kind of even feel more comfortable. So, Do you have me. other family members who are professional musicians? No. no. None just, at all? No. Nope. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, just me. Where'd you get it from? Like I said, I think I got it from my mother, really, because uh, she was actually, she had a great voice. She sang in the church choir in Stoughton at the Immaculate Conception uh, for the Portuguese masses. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had an incredible voice. I mean, you know, the minute you walked into the church, you could just hear her voice, and it was amazing. I have a, a piano that has been now performed on or played on by five generations of my family. Wow. Goes back to my grandmother and goes all the way down to my five-year-old grandson. See that? Isn't that, that must make you feel great, oh, though. Oh, absolutely. And, and the, the funny thing is the piano is not in great shape anymore. It's, <laughs> it's over 100 years old. Um, but I don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. I, it, it's my family's piano. It's my whole I, family is on that see, piano. Well, see, you understand. It does go back to family, no matter how little. Yeah. You know, even, even though my, I don't have 10 people in my family or generations of that, you know, all it takes is one, mm -hmm. one inspiration. And can change your whole life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what obstacles have you overcome uh, in, in your life? I know that you, you had a, a serious illness as a child. Yes. And uh, obviously that's one of the obstacles you've overcome. Yeah, that was a big one, actually. Um, I had polio growing up. Um, I was maybe about eight months old in Madeira Island, Portugal. Um, uh, my mom had just lost her husband. My dad, at two, I was two months old when my dad died in an accident there in uh, Venezuela. And my mom went back to Portugal. And I was about eight months old, and I got polio and my left leg. And so through my younger years, you know, all through, you know, elementary school, and everything, I had the Forrest Gump braces. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I dragged my leg behind me because of the muscle atrophy. So I went through a lot of that, you know, with uh, some kids, you know, the bullying thing back then wasn't as known as it is now today. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, there was always the kids that would pick on the kids that had a, uh, either a physical disability or something, you know, different. So I went through a lot of that, and, but I always uh, fought through all that, you know, I didn't let that get to me, you know, I made it through school and got through everything. When I was 18, I finally had some surgeries corrected my um, foot, and I had a club foot, and they corrected it after several surgeries, and it changed my whole life after that. So after 18, I just started uh, having a very productive and normal life. Became a tap dancer? And, uh, yeah, I would, I would, not a tap dancer, but, uh, you know, I could go out there and do a few steps <laughs> back then. <laughs> Something that I never was able to do when I was younger. So, yeah, I did overcome that, and that was a big one for me. And um, that's why I kind of, uh, I've always had this dream of uh, giving back someday because I feel myself very lucky today mm -hmm. to be able to be walking on a, a, and having a productive life that I did have. And, and I've seen you walk. You yeah. walk okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, I really don't do bad. And... Uh, and I'm very lucky. I feel my, I feel that being blessed. Yeah. So, I got a chance to do a whole nother chapter. You know? and, and I know that you, what we're going to be talking about in a few minutes is the, is the show that you've got coming, and that's, yes. that's a charitable event as well. Yes, and it is. It's a, it's a unique event that, that you've put together. Yeah. Um, but before I ask you that, we talked a little bit before about things that bug you on the stand. How do you deal with? Criticism from the audience. <laughs> I, 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 I know that you, you wrote me a note and said there's always one in the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it does seem like that sometimes. It is funny, that? isn't it? I mean, you know, you've been there, yeah. right? Oh, oh absolutely. And, um, well, I've gotten my share of beer cans <laughs> thrown at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it reminds me actually of a movie. You probably, you probably uh, remember this Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. Sure. There's, a, there's a part in that movie where the, there's a band playing and the club that they were playing at, they actually put a, a fence mesh yes, in yes. front of the band. That was pretty common. <laughs> Very common, actually. Yeah. And they put a, a whole mesh because people, if they didn't like the band, they would throw things, literally throw their drinks, glasses. We didn't, we didn't have that luxury in fraternity houses. No, no, no. But anyways, um, I mean, it makes me think of that. But uh, I, think, uh, I think to handle the harsh criticism, 
you got to really kind of be a professional and you got to be a, a confident in yourself. You have to know what you are. It takes a thick skin. It does take thick skin. And, you know, some people, believe me, I've dealt with many, many musicians, singers, everything, that you just tell them that you don't like one note that they hit. Mm -hmm. You say, I think you should do a fifth instead of the third on, on that backup line. And they just kind of start crying because they just not they just don't have that ability to take some constructive criticism. Exactly. Never mind harsh criticism. And that isn't even criticism. And that's, that's not even a suggestion. That's correct. That's what I'm trying to say. So the level of criticism you can take, mm -hmm. I think, is, is judged by the years of experience that you have and, that you, and how much confidence you have in your own self and belief in your own and, self. And I think what, what audiences sometimes don't understand is that when you're performing a song, you are laying yourself basically bare emotionally. Absolutely. You are, you are summoning up whatever emotions you got in you and you're putting it into that song. Correct. So that when somebody is heckling you or somebody is, is, is saying, I didn't like the way you did that or something, it hurts. I mean, yep. it hurts down deep inside, yeah. and you really got to be strong to yep. say, "Well, thank you very much for your suggestion." And uh, that's uh, right. Take well, it under advisement. You, no, you're you're right. You know, I agree a hundred percent with you on that because, um, like, you know, it's just like when you get the little kids. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I remember the days when I had my daughter in dance class when she was a little girl doing the tap dancing and the mm -hmm. jazz dancing with their little outfits, and you know, there's always one girl that's like. Great. Yeah. Oh my God, this, does, this girl just dances up a storm, all these spins, the pirouettes are perfect. I mean, and then the other kids kind of like, oh, everybody claps for this one girl and she goes on, but they don't clap as hard for the other. You know, the feelings mm -hmm. are hurt. Yeah. So it starts right there, even at a young age. Oh, sure. And um, when people are, are that, that give that much critique to a low level like that, when it's just a girl doing a little tap dancing show, I think the adult is really the guilty party to do that because it's just a kid. Mm -hmm. It's not like she's going to be the best ballerina in 20 years. She's just having fun right now and, and her parents are putting her into an art that maybe she'll enjoy. Yeah. And some people don't look at things like that. Well, it applies the same thing applies to when we're adults. Mm -hmm. When we go perform in front of a crowd, there's always that one in the crowd <laughs> that... <laughs> Oh, this guy's, well, you know, well, this remember, guy stinks. I remember a couple of decades ago, I, I did a song that I have, I really liked the song, and I thought I did a great job on it. Right. And then after the show, a friend came up and told me that she hated it. It was <laughs> awful. I was, cr I've never, st I haven't done the song since. See that? I haven't done the song since. Yeah. Well, see, you know, it, I can't really say, I mean, uh, I'm a pretty straightforward type guy. I'm a yeah. straight up guy. So, I mean, uh, I, I can, I suppose it comes down to if you can dish it out, you better be able to take it because mm -hmm. um, I think that for every negative thing someone has to say about you, um, they probably have, there's probably about 10 negative things that you could say about them. Because any people that, that do that, they, you know, to me, I, nice re people. I respect anyone that yeah. has the courage even, the courage or um, to, the confidence to get up on a stage to begin with. The technical term is chutzpah. That's it. <laughs> and so I respect that already. Yeah. They've already ga gained my respect by just getting up there mm -hmm. and saying the first word, hello, to everybody, greeting the crowd. That right there already, you got my respect. So... I think once you become um, in the uh, professional in this business and you, you realize um, that, you know, not everybody is as good as everybody else. There's always going to be somebody here, somebody there, somebody mm -hmm. here, somebody there. So you can't, I don't think judging people like that and actually giving them harsh criticism, I wouldn't. It's counterproductive. I, I wouldn't put myself um, available to that person mm -hmm. to affect me. I wouldn't let, give them that satisfaction of letting them see that affect me, yeah. put it that way. I, I would just smile. That's a good attitude. Yeah, well, of course. I would course. just keep smiling and laughing and that, saying, that's right, buddy. I'm going to get you up here next yeah. song. And so after all, they are a customer. Yeah, I'll get you up here next song. You yeah, can yeah. sing a song for everybody, and then you can show, how, show us all how it's done. And simple as that. You know, it's good. you can do better. Come on up. 
Now, you're, you're still in show business. Is this yeah. what you do for your full-time living? No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm a recruiter, a temporary agency, um, uh, for a recruiter for temps, uh, oh, okay. laborers, things like that. But music is my passion. I, I've never left that. I, what has kept you in it for so long? Just, um, it's in my heart, it's in my soul. Simple as that. <laughs> Can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's a song like that. It's like a disease. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk about the June 21st show. Yeah. Uh, why did you bring it together? Why did you put it together? Well, um, actually, this is what I really wanted to get out a lot of today, get involved a little bit more talking about this show, this event coming up, because it's going to be a great event. Um, June 21st at Stoughton High School Auditorium. I've always um, wanted to give back something, uh, as we spoke about earlier. I grew up with polio, and I had a disability. Mm -hmm. And um, I know what it took for me to get through it. It took a lot of support from family and love and people like that that cared about me. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I've always wanted to do something and give back to, to, the, to the kids that maybe are in that same position I was at one time. Mm -hmm. And I've overcame it. And I've led a productive life, so there's never a dead end. You can always find a way out. Sure, sure. So, um, so I, I figured I'd uh, brought this up, and I brought it up to the school committee, and, uh, and uh, they loved the idea of me putting together a comedy meets rock and roll show. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of uh, different acts and shows out in the area, and I do some opening acts for Steve Sweeney, the comedian, excuse me, number one comedian in Boston. Him and Lenny Clark are my two favorites. They've been around forever, and I just saw Lenny Clark actually Sunday. Uh, I've taken a couple of selfies with him. Uh, it was so funny because um, them two guys just keep you laughing. I mean, you oh, can't incredible. You yeah. can't stop yeah, laughing. Yeah. It's in, they're incredible. I, I mean, I've worked with Steve like maybe quite a few times, and it doesn't matter how many times I work with him and see the, him perform. A third name that you could add to that list, of course, is Jimmy Tingle. Yes, uh, you could add a, a couple of them, but yeah. Lenny Clark in the Boston, in our area here, Lenny Clark and, and Steve Sweeney are probably the two biggest names in mm -hmm. comedy in Boston. And they've been around for a long time, oh, yeah. so they're, oh, yeah. they're top of the line. And um, so I asked Steve if he'd be interested in uh, putting, uh, putting this together and being part of it with me so I could, uh, so uh, I thought of asking Steve, and he said, sure, he was available for June 21st. And once the school gave me the OK to go on with the show, I got uh, Steve Sweeney as the main act. And um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, everybody knows Steve Sweeney. And if you don't, you can just Google him. Um, Steve Sweeney, Boston's number one comedian. Um, uh, we are having this show at the Stoughton High School Auditorium June 21st from 7 to 10. The doors will open at 6 p.m., and if you want tickets, you can just go to aceticket.com, or you can call Ace Ticket. Um, uh, we'll have all that information tickets. on the screen in a little okay. while. So, um, but other than that, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the other, act, the other acts that are going to be on that show. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, you haven't done this show elsewhere. Before. No, no. This, this is, is a, a, a new production, new, new production that I'm uh, put together uh, for this event, and... Um, I have a, 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 a tribute band, a Bad Company tribute band. Of course, I know you know Bad Company, mm -hmm. but um, they're great. We've, and, um, we've had several of them as guests on the show, but no. There you go. <laughs> a lot of Bad Company. Uh, yeah, a lot of Bad Company. But my friend, one of my best friends, actually, uh, Tom, Tom DeAndrade from Stoughton. Uh, we all call him Tommy, Tommy DeAndrade. But uh, one of the best drummers I know. Uh, I respect Tommy a lot. And, um, and he's another one, like myself, uh, he, he became um, a great drummer and a great musician, and uh, he overcame a lot of obstacles, too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Tommy himself is an amputee. He has a prosthetic leg. He lost his leg um, just below the knee um, when he was like 13 years old, I believe, right around there. And I've always stuck together with Tommy. We, we were friends, you know, and uh, we started playing music together, actually, in my aunt's garage. And um, it brings back a lot of memories, mm -hmm. but I also, at the same time, I know what Tommy went through, too, sure. you know? And um, being a drummer with, you know, a prosthetic leg 
and everything. Um, Makes I, his high hat a little weak. Doesn't well, it? I give him a lot of credit, and and that's one another reason why I, you know I asked Tommy to join me on this venture, mm -hmm. and um, he he couldn't be here today, or else he would have been. But um, I um, I wanted him to get a, a lot of high praise for that because um, he also overcame a lot of that and to to be where he is at today with. Uh, a great band. I mean, they're, they're fantastic. He actually does a, a Led Zeppelin tribute band, too, mm -hmm. and he does an Aerosmith tribute band. He plays drums for them, too, and he plays drums in this Bad Company band. I chose the Bad Company tribute band to perform that night because I think it's a little lighter. Mm -hmm. It's a little lighter, more family-oriented. It's not going to be the loud crash and rock that Zeppelin would throw out or the Aerosmith would throw out. Right. So I think that it would be more um, accepted by the crowd. Uh, I think everyone will love them. Trust me, they're very, very good, top of the line. And the singer is fantastic for them. Uh, the band is awesome. Every musician in the band is great. So please uh, come down and don't miss the show because they are great. And then also I have um, Michelle Romero, mm -hmm. which is a Stoughton girl. Have you ever heard of Michelle? I have not, no. Michelle is fantastic. She started singing at a young age, too. I mm -hmm. Actually, she used to sing with me and this other keyboard player that we, we had a three-piece three thing going many, many years ago, like maybe 15, 20 years ago, um, Portuguese music uh -huh. and American music, and we played in Portuguese restaurants. So Michelle started singing when she was maybe like 14, 15, the traditional stuff. She did all the Portuguese cultural... A regular, very, a regular Brenda Lee. This girl, let me tell you something, Michelle... Uh, shout out to you. She's uh, fantastic. The Portuguese community, uh, they love Michelle. Michelle is a great singer and a great entertainer, great performer. She'll be doing about four or five songs that night. And um, she's uh, a dancer, mm -hmm. singer. She's like, a, I would compare her to uh, a Jennifer Lopez style girl, like uh, that kind of uh, person, like a Shakira, mm -hmm. you know, uh, up tempo, pop. Um, very uh, beautiful girl, um, uh, dances fantastic. Uh, worth the price of admission. Really. Any one of these acts are worth that price of the admission alone, never mind together. And the price so of admission I'm looking, is not very expensive. No, if for $20, let me tell you right now, you couldn't even get in the door at a Steve Sweeney show in Boston at, at Nick's Comedy Stop. Mm -hmm. it, it would be $35, $40. So for twenty dollars, I mean, you not only get Steve Sweeney, but you get a great rock and roll band. You get Michelle Romero, and um, if you're lucky, I might just do a couple of songs. I don't know, uh -huh. <laughs> but I will perform a couple of songs also. So I think between do you bring a band with you? Or do you no, just, I'm going to probably I'm going to be doing um, a, a couple of songs with Tommy's band. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're probably going to learn one or two of my original songs off my last CD uh -huh. that I did, and and we'll do that, and probably one. I'll do a song with them, a cover song, too. Can people buy your CD? Well, it's not finished yet. I'm oh. working on it. I think probably in another six months I'll have it out. But uh, well, uh, when, you, when you get it out, you'll have to come back and, uh, and, and do a, uh, a, a, release, absolutely. a release party. I planned on having a record release party anyway, um, uh, probably beginning of the year next year. But anyways, um, I just wanted to kind of really touch on these other acts. And Tommy DeAndre, I'll back to him. Um, the reason I chose Tommy to be to be part of this with me, I, I spoke to him several times about this, is because we both always wanted to do something like this, give back mm -hmm. um, in some way. So I thought that this would be a good way to give back, and all we're going to do, every one of these acts have done a great job for me uh, as far as prices. They've cut back on uh, their normal prices, uh, so any net proceeds we get from this show all the net proceeds are going to be going directly to the school, to the special education department. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the special education department, sometimes um, they need uh, some new things. Uh, could be a ramp, to a wheelchair ramp. Mm -hmm. It could be a new computer software for kids maybe with hearing difficulties. Special education is quite expensive. It's in, it's quite extensive, too. And, and Expensive and, and the, extensive. the state doesn't send down funding for it. They it all don't. comes out of the local school budget. That's correct, correct. And that's one of the reasons why I thought that maybe that would be a, a good thing to do. And um, not only that, I think the town of Stoughton, um, when it's things like this, for some reason I've noticed this, that um, when I do fundraisers events in Stoughton, um, they really pull together. 
uh, they really get a lot of support. Mm -hmm. You know, when uh, when we do these things, uh, uh, like big fundraisers in Stoughton the town. Is, in my experience, a great community when awesome. it comes to reaching out for help and yes. public service. Stoughton people are there. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I remember back in the days when we were fighting the MWRA's plan to yep. put a sludge plant here and stuff. Right. And the town... They raised. I mean, they, they raised. They, they, they raised above. Absolutely. I mean, they were just so supportive. They do. And I, that's one of my biggest things. And that's why I thought this would be a great thing to do. Because, um, sure, you might not have a disability yourself, but uh, I can guarantee you there's not one person that doesn't know someone oh, absolutely. or has a family member or knows some, a friend mm -hmm. that has a disability of some sort. You know, maybe they have a prosthetic limb. Maybe they have a, they're in a wheelchair. Maybe they're autistic. Autistic. Maybe, uh, they're, they're, any, it could be anything. Developmentally challenged. Anything. It, it, all kinds of things. Anything. So that's why I chose that department mm -hmm. to get, you know, the funding from this event. So the net proceeds will be all going to that. It is a costly event. No matter what you do, there's always a cost to anything you do. Mm -hmm. But the cost for this is going to be minimal compared to what it would normally have been if you were to hire these people out. Sure. And so the net proceeds will be uh, maximized by doing that. And, it, and, um, and it's not like you're using a very expensive venue. You're using no. the high school. And the high school was awesome, too, about the whole thing. They mm -hmm. waived the, the, the rental fee for the auditorium for me, the building usage fee, they call mm -hmm. it. Yep. They waived that to make this event possible. So I want to thank the high school, um, everyone, Dr. Rizzi, and everyone that was involved, um, Julie Miller, the pr uh, principal. And um, I, I really li like to uh, say thank you for letting this go on. And um, hopefully the town of Stoughton can pull through for me on this, and the school, and the kids, to show up that night and um, come down, have some fun, laugh, music. Yeah. What better? What better remedy for any problems you have? Now, your promotions uh, mention uh, the United Group. Tell us what that's, what that's all about for okay. our viewers who don't know. Absolutely. Um, there's a, a new group that uh, they organized um, a, maybe six months ago, a year ago. Um, it's the Oasis Group in Stoughton, uh -huh. but it's part of the group. And uh, what they, they're calling themselves We Are United. Um, and uh, they have their own uh, logo with, it's, it's spelt, we are the letter U dash K N I G H T E D. Oh, you must have gone the to Stoughton, Stoughton High School. The Stoughton Knights. You must have gone to Stoughton High School. You well, you spell very I well. I can actually spell the Black Knights. Imagine <laughs> that. So they use that, we are united, spelt that yep. way instead of. U N I T E D. Yeah, of course. And that's the reason I spelled it out. But I mean, uh, I think that's great what they do. They're working with um, kids on um, drugs, um, you know, uh, information on drugs, drug abuse, recovery. Um, they're, they're really putting a lot more time into the Stoughton High School, the kids, teaching them what what this is and what that is. Don't do this, don't do that. This is what will happen if you do. All about the drugs and everything that's going on today. Will they be raising funds at this event also? Um, they will be raising funds at this event. They're gonna have a, a table set up outside the doors as you come in. Concession stand. A concession stand with T-shirts, their group T-shirts. I told them they're more than welcome to, to join our night mm -hmm. and um, come in and you know promote their group, which I think is a great thing. Why not have another organization, you know, that's worthwhile in Stoughton, promote something for a good cause, you know? The Stoughton Farmer's Market, which is going to be starting soon, mm -hmm. uh, is also part of that United... That's event. correct, and they'll be having tickets. They already have tickets, actually. Um, there are tickets for sale at the Stoughton YMCA mm -hmm. right now uh, on Central Street, and um, anybody needing tickets can also call us uh, 774 Two five oh, wait, nine. We'll, we'll get this up on the on the screen. Nine Roy, eight oh nine. If you oh can nine, put the, the slide yeah. up on the screen, tell us about the show. I keep forgetting that you're going to put that up there, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, the, the, hopefully we have a great turnout. That's what I'm hoping, so we can uh, give them a nice check. Okay, the show is uh, on Saturday night, uh, June twenty first, two thousand and fourteen. Roy, can you put that slide up there? Uh, it's from seven to ten p.m. 
Uh, comedian Steve Sweeney, as you can see on the screen, music by Rocksteady and Michelle Romero and Joe Kidd, who, uh, who, whose real ra last name isn't Kidd, but we'll, we'll, we'll let him get away with that for the time. No, because, they can leave it there. He's younger than I am, so I can call him a kid. They can leave uh, it there. <laughs> Saturday, June 21st, two four, uh, 2014, 7 to 10 p.m. at the high school auditorium. General admission is just $20 a person to benefit the special education department. For advanced tickets, you want to call ACE Ticket at 800-697-3287. For show information or local ticket sales, 774-259-9809. And as we said before, we are, we are a united group. We'll have concessions, uh, and those will start at 6.30 p.m. And we hope, uh, you know, everybody will go. Um, and if people want your uh, want your CD, they can contact you somehow. Absolutely, they're, they're, they'll know about it soon enough. The word will be out there soon. So I'm not worried about myself personally right now. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about this right now for the kids. Sure. So um, I, I'm not putting myself first in this at all. You know, um, this is about the kids right now. So mainly, I, I really want to push this event. I, I'm really um, looking forward to it. It's going to be a great night. I mean, I'm sure it like is. I said before, the best remedy for any issues or any problems of everyday living. I mean, comedy, laughter, music. Sure. What else is there? One thing <laughs> I didn't say is if you go to aceticket.com, the keyword is Steve Sweeney. So that'll, that'll take you to the show. Yes. And, uh, well, I want to thank uh, our guest today. Joe Kidd Fernandez. Yes, thank you. And um, we also want to thank Maxie's Delicatessen at Cobb's Corner. And we all know, uh, uh, those of you who have ever seen me on the show before, uh, we refer to them as mm, 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 Maxie's uh, because the food is so good. And it, it's just a lot of fun uh, to go there and get yourself a you know an eight inch thick pastrami sandwich. I may be exaggerating a bit. Uh, but the food is delightful there. And when you go by, make sure you tell them that you, you heard about it here on Community Forum and say, mm, 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 Maxie's, because they, they love it when you say things like that. And good breakfasts. Oh, excellent breakfasts. I mean, just Absolutely. great stuff. The best blintzes I've ever had. Yeah. Um, we got a few messages for you. Give pints for half pints. Sherm's sixth annual blood drive for Children's Hospital in memory of Fran Stetson, hosted by Sherm's Auto Body in Stoughton. Sunday, June 1st, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Breakfast and lunch will be served. Uh, it's at the, um, I can't read that. In, can you read that in Portuguese? Yes, it's at the Sociedad Philharmonica de São João Club, which is the St. John's Portuguese Club, right next to the VFW in Stoughton on Washington Street. 845 Washington Street in Correct. Stoughton. And uh, that's a blood drive. Congratulations to Joe Feaster, winner of the Lifestyle Change Awards presented by the Beth Israel uh, Deaconess Medical Center and the uh, was it AHA, is that American Hospital Association? Uh, this award recognizes uh, Boston area individuals who have made dramatic lifestyle changes that have improved their heart health. And the American Cancer Society is still looking for volunteers, always looking for volunteers to drive cancer patients to and from treatments. The uh, number is 1-800-ACS-6662, or you can go online to cancer.org. And Ilse Marks Food Pantry and St. Anthony's Free Market, uh, the, two free, the two food pantries here in Stoughton that serve Stoughton and the surrounding area at 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher at uh, 3410611 or 3410549. They can use your help not only to donate food, uh, and or to donate money, but to donate some 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 of those muscles and and and, and spirit and and, and uh, eager help, uh, because they, they they need workers as well as as, as uh, the things that they give away. Uh, Meals on Wheels, uh, again, still looking for people to drive uh, and and bring some uh, hot meals and and warm conversation. Seven eight one three four four eight 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 two extension two. Ask for Jessica. Stoughton Penny Saver, we want to pray, uh, express our, our gratitude to them for uh, helping us publicize the show and also um, to let you know that Stoughton Penny Saver is a very effective advertising medium. I, I spent the last you know, 
half a century in the advertising business, and we've used the penny saver on many, many occasions with great results. So give them a call, 344-4833. And the International Forum Show, which is uh, Roy's other venture here at SMAC, interviewing guests with local roots throughout the world via Skype. Uh, it's on Sundays at 8.30, Mondays at 11, Wednesdays 9, Thursdays 9.30 p.m., Saturday at noon, Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 28, the International Forum at yahoo.com, 781-760-6991. If you uh, know of somebody who should be a guest on that show, or if you know of somebody who, uh, or if you are somebody who should be a guest, give them a call. Stoughton Farmers Market, my wife's on the board of that, so I'm... I'm quite intimately involved in that one. <laughs> at, uh, it's going to be, this year it's moving, it's at the First Parish Universal Church, right downtown, right on their front lawn. 790 Washington Street, Stoughton Center, Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's right across the street from the theater. Starting June 7th, Rain or Shine, nonprofit. This is a nonprofit group. This is not the profit-making uh, business that runs a farmer's market across town. This is a volunteer run. There are three farms two bakeries, and a lot more. I know they're still signing up uh, new members, so uh, new participants, and it's, it's really going to be good this year. There will be live music uh, every week. It's, it's just a great take, a lot of fun, and some really great food. The Community Forum Show is on in Stoughton, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6, Monday at 8, Tuesday at 5, on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon 28. You almost can't take a walk without tripping over this show. Uh, and uh, for comments and suggestions, communityforum1 at yahoo.com. On in Easton, you can see, there we go, Monday at 9, Tuesday at 8, Wednesday at 3, Saturday at 10, Comcast Channel 9, Verizon 22, same uh, uh, contact address. And we, uh, as, as, as I always do when I host the show, uh, we have a thought for the week. And this one comes from John F. Kennedy. And he said, should I do this as Kennedy? I am certain, I am certain <laughs> that after the dust of the centuries has passed over our cities, we too will be remembered not for our victories or defeats in battle or in politics, but for our contribution to the human spirit. And I want to thank you as, a, as an entertainer for contributing what you can to the human spirit. And I, 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 I think that people don't understand that, that, that uh, uh, our educational system that in, includes, and then Stoughton includes very well, uh, musical entertainment that's is a right. definite part of the education of our children. Well, that's it. It prepares yeah. them for, it prepares them for, for, for life. And I agree 100%, and I, I really am um, uh, closing, on closing to me, I, I would like to say thank you Thank you, Roy Cohen. Um, great, uh, all the people here at the studio have been wonderful. Um, thank you for the time. A few of them are not so wonderful, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> but that's we've okay. Got, we've only got a 15 seconds, so I just want to say good night to, uh, to uh, so long to mm -hmm. uh, all the people who are watching us, and I appreciate uh, being here. And we hope that we'll see you uh, again next time. Steve Fradkin, Community Forum. Good night. I finished when it was zero, zero, zero. So you want to do a PS?
Sure, if you want me to. Yeah, they can have Joe do it. What do you want to do? You want to do it? Uh, yeah, have him do it. Okay, <laughs> what, do you want, what do you want me to do? Yep.